Hey guys, welcome to our daily encounter. For our devotion today, I just want to focus on really two words from our reading today. In Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1, the Hebrew writer calls those he was writing to holy brethren. He says, therefore, holy brethren. And that's an idea that we really need to allow to sink into our minds. Holy brethren. Uh, I think sometimes we forget just how holy we are as believers in Jesus Christ. Uh, oftentimes we might think, well, you know, I'm just an, a regular person. Uh, you know, I'm a Christian. Uh, I go to church on Sunday. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing that makes me different than anybody else. Uh, and we kind of just view ourselves as just regular people who are just like everybody else. And really, uh, our, our Christianity, our uh, our religion is really just uh, something else that we add to what we already are uh, in addition to our identity. And we forget that what we are in Christ is a very holy thing. Uh, we're not a uh, just some type of uh, social club. We're not just some type of business organization as a church. Uh, we are very holy uh, in the eyes of the Lord. We may not feel very holy oftentimes, but we are very holy. Uh, here the Hebrew writer calls his readers holy brethren, and that's what we are. And there's several ways that we can think about just how holy we are. We can start very broad and think about the fact that we are a holy nation before God. Uh, we are holy because we're a part of a holy nation uh, that uh, the Apostle Peter talks about this in his first epistle, in 1 Peter chapter 2, in verse 9, where he says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So collectively, we are a holy nation. And that's exactly what God wanted from Israel. Back in Exodus chapter 19, the Lord uh, basically said, You know, I, I, I want to make you guys a, a holy nation unto me. Uh, and Eventually, that did become fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Um, it took a long path to get there, but through Jesus Christ, a holy nation has been established, and we've been grafted into that holy nation, and we're a part of that. We are citizens of heaven, as the book of Philippians uh, tells us. We are a holy nation, so broadly speaking, we are holy because we're a part of a holy nation, the kingdom of heaven itself. But we can narrow it down and say that we're also a holy temple. Uh, with the nation of Israel, they had they were a nation, a holy nation to God, but they also had a temple, a very holy temple there in their midst, and it was the very dwelling place of God. Well, we as Christians are the temple. We are a part of a holy nation, but we are the temple within that nation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul speaks of the church in this way. He says in verse 16, uh, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So uh, that makes us very holy. We are the temple of God. He says in verse 17, If anyone destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy. And that's what you are. As the temple, as the dwelling place of God, we are very holy. You think about Mount Sinai. And when God came and revealed his majesty there, in Mount Sinai with the thunder and the lightning and the shaking of the mountain and how the presence of God caused fear and trembling, even in Moses himself, the man of God. And uh, we have that same God dwelling in us as we are his temple. And so we are the temple of God, therefore we are holy. And then we could narrow it down even more than that in that uh, individually we are the temple of God, of course, in chapter 6, he says, uh, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? And so individually we are a temple of God. Collectively we're the temple. Individually we're the temple. And then uh, we offer up holy sacrifices to God. We could, we could go back to First Peter and read about that in chapter 2, uh, where he says, I uh, in verse 4 it says, And coming to him to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious 
in the sight of God. Verse 5, you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And so we are a holy priesthood that offers up these holy sacrifices. Um, so you can see uh, very broadly we have us as a part of a holy nation. We are also a holy temple. You narrow it down even more than that. We each are individually temples, but and we are we also are a part of a of a of a priesthood in which each and every one of us offer up spiritual sacrifices of God, the the sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise uh, uh, unto His name, as the Hebrew writer talks about in Hebrews chapter thirteen later on. Uh, we are a holy people, and what that ought to do is encourage us to live a holy life. Uh, we are not like everybody else, so we shouldn't get into the mindset of the world around us, but to remember that the Lord has set us apart to be His special people. And as such, we have a special relationship with Him, and therefore, the activities we get involved in, our responses to situations, the way that we speak, everything should just be anointed with holiness uh, as we interact with this world around us. So these are some things we can reflect on as we do our readings today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.